Hey there, this is Andrew. I hope you're doing well. Today we're going to be continuing our 360 video series by finishing out the functionality within our video manager. And in the last video we went over the basics of our project as well as got some simple pause toggle functionality working. And in this video we're going to be spending some time subscribing to the events from our video player and writing some of the basic functionality for seeking forward, back, and going in between each of our videos. And it's all going to be pretty simple, so you're going to need to open up the video manager as well as the input manager scripts. And here we are within the video manager script, where we're going to be writing out all the signatures that we're going to be needing to fill within this video. And if you remember in the last video we worked on our awake as well as our pause toggle. And we can expand our awake, because we're going to be subscribing to three events in it by the end of this video. And the first thing that we're going to be adding is our start event. So we're going to be a private void, start. We don't have anything to put into it just yet. And then we'll want to create another function for on destroy. And this is so when every time our video manager is destroyed, we're going to want to unsubscribe from all of the video events that we're going to be subscribing to in awake. But we need to have those signatures, like I said, before we can subscribe. And I'll talk a little bit more about the events themselves once we start to write them out. But we're going to need to write the signatures. So we're going to start with a public void that we're going to be calling seek forward and this function is you probably guessed it already going to be seeking forward by 10 seconds within our video we'll have another one for seeking back and then we'll scroll down here so we get a little bit more space we'll have a private function that's going to be called start seek where we're going to be passing in a float. And the seek forward and seek back are basically what are going to be called from our input manager. And each of those are then going to be calling start seek and either giving it a positive or a negative value. Then we'll be creating two more functions for going to our next video and our previous video. And these functions that we just wrote are primarily going to be called from the input manager. And I say that because the next three functions we're going to be writing are the ones that are primarily going to be running once something happens within the video player. So let's scroll down even further. And the next one we're going to be writing is a private void that we're going to be calling start prepare, where we'll be passing in an int, which is going to be the integer for the clip index that we want to use. And our clip index is going to be within our video clips, we're going to be using our next video or our previous video to add or subtract one from our index that we have up at the top. We're going to be passing it into here so we know which clip that we want to use. So hence the name clip index. And then we're going to be writing just two more. I know we're writing a lot here, but all these are really simple. They're just two or three lines. So we'll breeze through them pretty quickly. We'll have one that's going to be subscribing to our actual video player. So once we're done loading something for our video player, this function is going to be called. So we're just going to be calling it on complete. And when we're subscribing to it, we need to match the arguments. So we're not necessarily going to be using this video player argument, but for us to tap into the event, we're in, we need to have it here. Well, we'll be using it for on complete, but we won't be using it for this next one, which is for on loop. And this is for once a video has completed, what do we want to do afterwards? So since we have those multiple videos, once one completes, naturally, we want to go to the next one. Or we just want to replay that video that we just were playing. So, so we have another argument here for a video player. And that's it. So we have all of those wonderful signatures. And then let's scroll back up and let's subscribe to all of them. And the first thing that we're going to need to do is use the reference that we're getting to our video player component. So we'll be writing video player dot. And one of the interesting things that we have if you're using a more recent version of Visual Studio is that there's this lightning bolt here. And it'll give us this little tool tip that says event. And we can press alt and we can press V. And it's going to give us all the events that we have for the video player. And we don't need all of these, but we're primarily going to be using the loop point reached. If you remember, 
we just wrote a function called on loop. So we're going to be subscribing that function to this event. Prepare completed, which we're going to be using for when we are going to be switching between videos. And if you're unfamiliar with what events are, essentially when the video player is sort of doing something internally, and once it's done or once it's begun, and it needs to let the let rest of the program know that it has occurred, it sends out one of these events. Now we can have functions that tap into these events and then execute a piece of functionality once that thing has occurred in the video player. So we don't have to make any more systems to track how long a video has gone on for if we need to loop it or checking to see if a video that we're trying to play is ready. The video player handles all of that for us. All right, enough of the explanation. Let's write these events out. So we have the C completed and we need to do a plus equals and then we just write on complete. There you go. It's pretty similar. So whenever we complete seeking within our video player, we're going to call the on complete function. And we'll be doing the same thing for our prepare completed to a plus equals on complete. Then last but not least, once we reach our loop point, we want to call the functionality in our on loop function. And then anytime that you're going to be subscribing to events, you want to unsubscribe them at some point. I've seen some people use on enable and on disable for this, but I just use awake and on destroy. So we're going to copy this chunk, paste it in on destroy, and we'll change all of these pluses to minuses. And we don't really necessarily need this because our video manager is always going to exist. The only time this is ever going to get called is when we're no longer playing the application and it gets closed or something like that. But it's a good habit to be into because there are situations where you destroy an object and you haven't unsubscribed from the events. And once that event is invoked, it can cause issues. And if you try subscribing to it again, if you haven't unsubscribed before, it just becomes a gigantic mess. So let's just be clean about it and stay consistent. And that's it for the subscriptions and all that good stuff. So let's go to our start where we're going to be calling a start prepare, where as soon as our video manager starts, we're going to say, Hey, let's get our index, which is initialized to zero. And let's start preparing that first video within the videos list. Just like that. And that's actually everything for awake and on destroy and start. So we can say goodbye to all of those. And we'll go to our seek forward function here, where, like I said before, the seek forward and seek back are primarily serving as accessors for our start seek. And this is a good way of giving other scripts or even UI elements functionality without having to write big chunks of code or worry about arguments within the scene. For me personally, if I can hard code it within a script and I know it's not going to change a whole lot, or if I want to make sure that someone else isn't going to come along and change that value, I'm going to put it within the script. But what we're going to do is we're going to call start seek and we're just going to give it a value of 10. And you can give this, if you want to just go for it one second or five seconds, you can put whatever value you want here. And then that's for going forward. And we want to go back. We're just going to write negative 10 seconds. And if we go down to our start seek, when we begin to seek, we want to make sure that we're setting is video ready to false because naturally we're going to be seeking. So the video is going to stop for a second and we're going to be changing the value. So within our input manager, it's no longer going to accept any input. And then once we have that, let's get our video player and we're going to be adding 10 seconds to the time here. So we have time plus equals and our seek amount. So we're going to be adding that 10 seconds or that negative 10 seconds. And if you remember when we start, to seek by adding our seek amount to our time, once it's done and the seek has completed, it's going to be calling that on complete. So if we scroll down here, once we've started the seek, we've added the time and it's sort of doing the, the loading. And once it's done, it's going to be calling this function here. So once that on complete hits, we know that we can re enable the input by saying, Hey, the video is ready now. All right. And that's about it for that. Let's go down to our next and our previous. These are the bigger functions of the script, but they're actually quite simple. And for our next video, the first thing that we need to do is add one to our index. And if we get to the end of our list, we just want to wrap it around. So if our index is equal to our videos dot count, we just want to say, Hey, let's wrap it around and make it zero again. So let's say our videos list consists of 10 videos. Once we go from 
our last video, which will be at an index of nine, and it gets to 10, we say, hey, go back to the first video. And once we do that, we want to start preparing our next video by calling that start prepare function again and giving it that index value. And then we can go down to previous video and let's just copy this. We're going to just use a little bit of it. And instead of plus plus, we're going to do a minus minus to subtract from our index. And then we're going to need to change what value we're checking for here. Instead of it being the end of our list, we want to make it negative one because if our index is at zero, which is going to be the first thing in our list, and then we subtract one from it. Naturally, we're not going to have anything at an index of negative one. So we're going to put it to the end of the list. And we'll do that by saying videos.count minus one. And that's all it for our next and our previous video. Now, if you remember, we're calling start prepare in our start function, as well as our next and our previous video. So anytime we're going to be loading a new video, this is the function that's going to get called because it's going to be responsible for loading the video. And when we start loading, the first thing that we want to do is say, hey, our video is not ready. So we'll set that to false. And then we need to set the new clip based on our clip index to the video player. So we say, hey, video player, we're going to give you a new clip. So we use our video player dot clip and we're going to be setting it to our videos list. And to access a specific clip within the videos list, we're going to be using that clip index. And then once we set that new clip, we just want to prepare. And that's it for the start prepare function. Now we just need to write on complete and on loop and we're good for this video. Well, actually we need to write this stuff in input manager, but then we'll be done. And I'm going to collapse everything really quick and scroll up so we can get a better see everything at once. We'll show a wake here. Just to reiterate the point that in our video player, every time that we're seeking and every time we're preparing a new video, once it's been done, we're calling that oncomplete function. So we're going to get to reuse this oncomplete function any time that the video is loading, even though that they are technically separate events. So anytime that the seek is done or the prepare is done, we want to say that our video is now ready. And once the video is ready, then we want to play it. And that's everything for the on complete. And then within on loop, when we get to the end of a video, naturally we're gonna try and go to the next one. So we'll just write next video and there we go. So that's pretty much it. It's all pretty simple. All of the functions are maybe two or three lines, but let's expand all of this and I'll step through everything for like a normal play when we're starting out. So as soon as our application starts, we get our video player, we subscribe to our prepare completed, and then in start, we're going to be starting to prepare that video using our index of zero. So the first video within our videos list up here at the top, and we'll go down to start prepare. And so we're going to say, hey, our video isn't currently ready, so let's not accept any input. We're going to be setting the video player's clip using that videos list and that index of, of zero. And then we're going to start to prepare that clip that we just put in. And then once that clip has completed preparing, this event from the video player is going to be called, where we're going to say, hey, the video is ready, and then we're going to start playing it. And that's the basic rundown of how this is all working. Now let's go into our input manager so we can set up our inputs for this. Let's go there. I think we can uncomment this now. Don't quote me on that. That may cause some issues, but I think it'll be okay. Then let's scroll down here. We're in our get down for our left touch on our Oculus controller. We're going to write our video manager, previous video. And then we'll copy this. We'll scroll down a little bit more. Where we'll be putting that to our left arrow. And then we'll be putting next video for our right touch controller and our primary hand trigger. So write next video. We can copy this. We'll put it into our right arrow. And then for our primary index trigger on our left controller, we're going to seek back. Where we'll copy that. We'll put it on our down arrow. And then our video manager dot seek forward. We'll do it on our primary index trigger right touch. 
So a lot of our controls are going to be based on whether they're on the left controller or the right controller, and we're primarily going to be using the triggers. And then we'll paste it into the up arrow. So we're going to test our keyboard input and editor really quick, where we've already done our pause toggle, but for our left arrow, we want to go to our previous video. For our right arrow, we go on to go to our next video. Down, we want to seek back by 10 seconds. And if we hit our up arrow, we are going to go forward by 10 seconds. So let's go into Unity and see if this all works. And now that we're back in Unity, I need to go to my video manager. And if you remember in the last video, we weren't using our videos list, so we'll have to set that up. So we'll delete the video clip that's already within our video player. And we'll disable this play on awake since we want to play it from our video manager. And we'll go to our videos. We'll set its size to two and we'll drop in our two videos. And I think that's good. Let's hit play and we'll see if this works. And I can hit control and I can look around here, hit the space bar to pause and then hit it again to play. I'll let go of my control and then I'll hit my up arrow that seeks 10 seconds within the video. And then if I hit my right arrow, it's going to go to my next video. And this will be a little bit easier to see the seeking by 10 seconds. You can see the people on the left here. And then once it reaches the end, it's going to go to the next video. So everything looks to be in pretty good shape here. And that about does it for this video. And the next one, we're going to be working on our feedback system and hooking it up to our video manager. But if you have any problems, feel free to leave them below and I'll see you in the next one.